All right, it's Sports Talk Plus, everybody's favorite college football NFL video show on YouTube and VirginiaPreps.com because there's only one video show we put up on VirginiaPreps.com, so it's got to be your is, favorite. And this is the one, yeah, and if it ain't your favorite, you got to make it your favorite. If, yeah. if you if we want to, you want to hear something different or do different, tell us. I'm the guy with the bad hair day who usually has brill cream, a little dabble do you. My name's Matt Hatfield. He's the guy shaking his head named Coach Ed Young. And I, I don't have bad hair days. This dude... No. Watch out. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I should have worn my hat today. Anyways, uh, he is the coach. He'll be back in school Monday at Nance, whatever. But we're going to take you to school on what's happening with college football and pro football. See what I did there? Take you to school. I like that. I like that. College football, we had Ivan Mazel, who was so kind and gracious to join us on our ESPN Radio 94.1 show. You can hear the podcast later up on virginiapreps.com talking some college football. He's one of the best in the business. And uh, we're on every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon on 94.1 ESPN Radio. You see the, the call letters there. Listen on ESPN Radio 941.com. Ed, one of the things he said that was interesting to me was he felt that the Big Ten was a little more well-rounded, top to bottom, than the SEC, which I think you concur with. Well, we both agree in, in terms of we go from top to bottom, bottom to top when you're looking at a conference. Some people just look at the top heavy teams. But we go all the way, so we include those worst teams or mm-hmm. having a bad season. Lower teams tier, to, yeah. As to what they want to do, and I, I kind of think Big Ten this year is a little bit better than SEC. It's so easy to pick SEC every time. It's like those are the only two in the running most of the time. Well, um, there's some games involving some SEC and Big Ten that we'll get to on our games in a week to watch, and a couple of them are actually kick off. You'll be watching this later, and you'll, you'll hear just like last week. And I want to make a quick correction. I said last week that Northwestern had the longest win streak in the country. I meant among Power Five programs. We know Central Florida won the mythical title in their eyes uh, last year, going undefeated. Did a great job. Scott Frost went to Nebraska after it. Oh, by the way, Central Florida's got a local tie in DJ Mack. The Mac Attack from Norview High School. So we want to give a shout-out there. And by the way, we forgot to give a shout-out on our radio show. Nice piece in the Buffalo newspaper on Kevin Ma- uh, Marks out of Norview running back. They uh, Buffalo hosts 2-0 Eastern Michigan, which beat Purdue. Eastern Michigan did. But Marks had 25 rushes for 138 yards and two touchdowns and a 38-29 win over Temple. So a couple of local kids from Norview doing well, Mr. Marks and Mr. Mac. Uh, Marks at Buffalo, Mac at UCF. But uh, Northwestern... Their streak is over. The question is, will Boise State keep their streak of being the big upset killer? Remember that years ago they beat Oklahoma, knocked them off in the bowl game, Fiesta Bowl? Will Boise State bite another team today at Oklahoma State, and will they keep their streak going undefeated towards the college football playoff? I say yes. I say no. Why? Oklahoma State. At Oklahoma State. Why? Oklahoma State is good. I think they shut down. They lost Mr. all those guys. Uh, Ripken or Ripken? Ripken, Ripken. Ripken. It's Cal Ripken's not playing in this yeah. game. It, it, the guy, his, his uncle, not his dad, Parker. it was his uncle. Yeah, Redskins quarterback. Redskins quarterback. Yeah. And this guy seems like he's been there for like eight years. They shut down Cal Ripken. That won't be hard to do because he's not playing. Yeah, he's not. He's, he was a great shortstop slash third baseman this time. Uh, this is going to be a shootout. They're both like putting up astronomical numbers. I'm calling 56-48 Boise. I think Ripken will play well. I think Boise has the weaponry. I'm going to take them over Okie State and the Pokes I think in I, Stillwater. I don't know what I picked, but I'm going to go Oklahoma State 44-38. Oh, that's what you're going with. Okay. I'm going, I'm going high scoring, too. Well, I'm just here to tell you, Okie State is good, but they're not as good as Boise. And I'm here to tell you that their defense will have a little more cr- chinks in the armor, a little more cracks than, than the Boise defense will. LSU at Auburn. You know, last year this was a crazy game. LSU came storming back against Auburn. This is SEC now. Winner here has to be considered the top challenger to Alabama I in the SEC West. That, yes. And, and in the, maybe in the conference altogether, although Georgia has something to say about that in the SEC East. Um, what do you think? LSU, Auburn, last year Auburn got bit 27-23. I don't think there's going to be that many points in this game. I think this is low scoring. I'll be stunned if LSU gets to 20 this time. I, I'm going Auburn. I'm going Auburn. 28-20. LSU's quarterback play to me has always been inconsistent. And I know they beat Miami in that first game, but I just don't know if I can trust their QB play. And that to me is the thing. I think you're going to have a couple of losses in this SEC West. If you watch the Texas and M Clemson game last like I did, you saw how physical they were up front. They, and in some ways they outplayed. I wouldn't say they manhandled Clemson, but they outplayed them up front. I just don't know that I can trust Joe Burrow in that LSU passing attack against Auburn. I'm going to go with the Tigers here. i got a little more faith 
in the passing game with Auburn and uh, Jarrett Stidham. I just think a little more solid there. Now, you know who used to coach Boise? Not anymore. Is that Washington? Chris, Chris Peterson. Peterson. Yeah. They're at Utah, and this is a sneaky, sneaky game. I wanted to take Utah so bad. I didn't, but this guy did. I did. I did take Utah. You like the Utes in Pac-12 after dark. Why? Because it's after dark. Because <laughs> it's after dark. And you got Utah. Utah have to do. I mean, what's Utah known for? It's one of your favorite states, but no, you better be it's, careful. It's you not better be careful. I've never been to Utah. It's one of his favorite states. They tell me they they take in the sidewalks at uh, uh, six o'clock. You know why it's one of my favorite states? Because Carl Malone and John Stockton well, play here. Yeah, you're a jazz I'm a, fan. I'm a jazz guy. Jazz I love fans. Utah. I can see that. Of all you Utes, Utah is not one of my Utes. highlight destinations to go to. Do the Utes that are two Utes in this game that you would keep an eye on? I would tell you there are two Utes that you keep an eye on. Zach Moss is going to run for a big game. He had 1,000 yards last year. And then I would tell you, defensively, I would keep an eye on a couple of youths, a couple of sophomore DBs and Javelin Kidry and Jalen Johnson. I want to see how they defend Washington's passing game. That's what I want to see in this game because Washington can go fast. Two-minute drill, they're good at that. Um, we know about their success when they had Jake Locker and then Browning. Now, so I want to see how they defend Peterson's because I think uh, his offense, especially in crunch time, you feel like you got you got an advantage on them. But what they did against Auburn, they almost came back and won that game. They were right there in the end, couldn't quite pull it off. And sometimes you can have a good loss. We talked about that with Ivan earlier, Mazel. Is that I think Washington's loss gave you a little bit of hope to Auburn that they're still going to be there if they can run the table. Texas A&M's not going to be there at the end, but they pushed Clemson to the limit to say, hey, right. someone out of the SEC can get there. And a and going to build under Jimbo Fisher. I think Washington's going to, when Utah has momentum, they're going to take it right back because they can go hurry up and seize control. I don't go very, very rarely do I go against Utah at home. I think they're, it's their, true. their record at home is... is 45 and 18 coming into this year, yeah, the last yeah, they're, they're, years. They're, they're, very good. they're very good at home. Um, I think they can control pace in this game uh, over Washington. Um I just It's just a feel. I just think Utah has – I mean, Washington's good, but I just had a feel this is a game where Utah can take it. I'm waiting for November 3rd when Stanford goes to Washington because I think nobody's giving Stanford enough love. Speaking of at home, they're tough at home. They got Bryce Love, who's a Heisman candidate, running the football. Uh, David Shaw's team uh, has a big one coming up on the road at Oregon next week and then at Notre Dame. But nobody's talking about Stanford in that, in that championship picture. And I think this is one of Stanford's better teams. I mean, granted, they got to defend – Jake Browning at quarterback, should they see him in November and that game be an undefeated showdown or a top 10 showdown like we were thinking it could be. But uh, Stanford's a team that's very dangerous to me, and they're more than just love running the ball. Their defense is pretty solid. They held USC down, uh, was it three points they held them to? Yeah, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was three. But, you know, remember, I think it was two years ago, I picked Stanford of. as one of the final four. You did, and you were wrong. 17-3. That defense is playing lights out. Yeah, and, and Stanford just they just had injuries that year and things just didn't work. So maybe I was off by a year or so at, and could this, be. this year that they could be in that final four. Could be. I, I think that they're a um, very physical, grinded-out team. Watch out for them. Going back to our picks now as we uh, continue here with the college football, and then I have a rant coming for the NFL. I have a major rant coming. Get everybody all, all up in arms. Ohio State at TCU. The Horn Frogs against Dwayne Haskins and the Buckeyes. Ed says, watch out for the upset, but he's taking the Buckeyes, yeah, gonna, even minus Herbs. Yeah, I'm going to take – it's it's their last game without Urban Meyer on the side. No Herbs. But, you know, TCU is one of the programs I don't think ever gets the credit due. No, they but don't. But they're always like in the top 20. Almost always under Gary Patterson, they're there. And, you know, can they beat a good Ohio State team, though? Yes, at home. And and, and is it a home game for them? Is there a, it's a neutral field? It's an Arlington game, but well, that's still a home that's game. TCU. Yeah, that's for TCU. Listen, Sean Robinson, the sophomore quarterback, is the highest rated recruit Gary Patterson's ever had. His defense, I think, will mix things up, disguise the coverages, get Haskins a little bit off his game. I don't think Ohio State's been tested yet. This is the game where they do. I think the Horn Frogs run up just well enough. I am worried about the offensive line of TCU blocking Ohio State's front. So if Ohio State's going to win this game, it's going to be going away 34-17 because the defensive line is just overwhelming the pass protection and blocking of TCU. But if it's close, and I do think it will be close, I'm going Horn Frogs by a field goal, Cole Bunts, a whisker, actually three whiskers, 27-24, three whiskers. Ding, ding, ding. I'm going Ohio State 33, 
24. Your pick said 21-18, so I guess you changed well, I, it. I, I'm going, I, I, I got a feeling it's going to be more. This guy changes three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, you should. USC at Texas. We just mentioned USC. Disappointing with their offense. And they're taking on Texas, who was a disappointment against Maryland right out of the gate. Uh, this is a game that both programs badly need. You talk about that Michigan Notre Dame game, game one. This is a we got to have this to, before going off the tracks. Because when I think of USC Texas, I think of that legendary Rose Bowl game with Vince Young against Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner. That's what I think of, and that this game doesn't have that cachet to it, and and we need USC and Texas great again. Yeah, I, back in the day, this was a game, tons of athletes, first and second round picks in the NFL, um, and that's dropped off. Now you're saying the loser of this is in serious trouble. I am saying that. I'm saying the loser of this, it will, it will stand out that. Hey, where, where, where's your season going? How are they not? Texas, if they lose this game, they'll be one and two. They still got to play TCU next week. They got to go to Kansas State. New Bill Snyder's team will be well prepared and coached up. True. Oklahoma, you've been noticing what Mr. Murray's been doing there? They got to play shit. Baylor. It'll be okay against Baylor. They still got to go to Okie State to see I'm a man. I'm not 40. I'm how old I am now. And West Virginia with Will Greer, who is a sneaky Heisman candidate quarterback. You find me how they're going to win seven, eight games with that schedule. Well, it ain't happening. Even if they beat Southern Cal, they still play those teams too. They do. But you do. You do need some wins in there, and you know it can be tough. I, I think they're going to be okay. I think both these teams will get. I disagree. Seven wins, six, seven I'll be wins. Mr. Nice I think guy. they'll be bowl eligible. It's more of a game Texas needs than SC, and it's in it's in Austin, which is why I go 32-30. You said 28-24, Longhorns. After this, USC gets Washington State, not one of Mike Leach's better teams. Arizona on the road, Colorado at Utah State, Arizona State at Oregon State, Cal at UCLA, then Notre Dame to finish up. Oh, by the way, Pac-12 as we move to our next game, Herm Edwards, and you did send a video show last week. I'll give you credit. A little golf clap. They could beat Michigan State. You didn't quite pick it. I didn't think it would be close, and they beat the Sparties in overtime in Pac-12 in, uh, Pac football after dark. It was so late I fell asleep. Nonetheless, Herm Edwards is a national Coach of the Year candidate, particularly they win this game over San Diego State on the road, and they keep it rolling, and you see that happening. Well, I, he's, it's going to become a story. I mean, because when he got hired, a lot of people scratching their head. A tremendous motivator. He hasn't coached college football in a long time. Known for the NFL, then he's been a... Uh, ESPN analyst for it seems like forever. Most people, that's all they know him as analyst, not even as a coach. But um, this is this would be a turn that corner win. It would put him at three and zero, mm -hmm. and I I think that you definitely talk about him in the in the race for coach of the year. And uh, you know the Pac-12 is not the SEC or Big Ten, so it's not impossible that Arizona State, you know, playing for a Pac-10, Pac-12 championship. Could they do that? Not happening because they got Washington next week, and I think it's where the train the, the thing's going to go off the track. And I think this game right here at San Diego State, who's a good football team, and they lost to yeah, Stanford Week One. You know, they've been my trendy pick the last couple years with some great running backs with Rashad Penny, and before that, I mean, they they Ed, this is a team that is every year. My man Donnell Pumphrey, too, the other great running back. Every year, San Diego State is dangerous. They're sneaky. They've had three consecutive double-digit win seasons under Rocky Long. I think their defense will be up to the task. At home, at night, classic letdown off the big win over Michigan State. Take SD, SU, 26-20, and extra fun. OT ending around 2.34 Eastern Standard Time. You'll still be up, though. I'll You'll just be, be leaving the dance floor. You'll be up. Check it out on your radio or your television. I'll be, I'll be up, and I got Arizona State winning that game. 28-24, he says, for the Sun Devils. Next week, though, at Washington, that's going to be a different order for them. Not a lot to talk about Georgia this week or Bama. Bama's got a big one with Ole Miss. Ole Miss leading the country in yards per play, so they could they could give Alabama a test and lose sixty-two to forty. Yeah, I I, I could see that. Everybody's talking about what seventy. Seventy. They could score seventy. Yeah. yeah. But they might give up thirty, and then Nick Saban will scream at everybody afterwards in the press conference, and that'll. Don't be ask him about Jalen Hurts. That you reporters out Stop there. Asking. Stop I'm asking. I'm tired of asking. Quarterback situation. Don't get a, the, the man upset. You know what he should do just to take everybody off. Play the other kid, the third quarterback. That's that really everybody. That really everybody. Right 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 yeah, just totally. You know, so you know what? We're gonna win this game anyway. I'm gonna still play it too. I'm gonna still play your hurts. Let me play the third kid. I'm gonna, play, I'm gonna start you from the beginning. Again. No, I, I think everybody really talking and mushrooming. That's I, what I, I would do. Let me ask you this in all seriousness, though. If all they say hurts is not playing a lot, will you think this kid will transfer? Or will he get redshirted? You talking about the third quarterback no, or hurts himself? He's not gonna play. I much. think he will eventually. But let me tell you something. Their third quarterback's not half bad. 
they got like quarterback. six quarterbacks on the roster. Yeah, I'm trying to think of his name. I don't have it. Of course, they're not all going to be in uniform. They got out the red shirt. Somebody so and somebody will transfer out. Mac Jones. That's it. Mac M A C. Mac Jones. He's not bad. He actually outperformed him in the preseason, from what I was told. That return so, of the Mac. Yeah, I'm telling you. I always what I would start. I'd start him just to get everybody all upset. That's what I would do. Why not? Why not? By the way, Texas A&M comes to Tuscaloosa next week, and that'll be interesting to see if Jimbo Fisher's team can get up on the road. I don't think that they will because they play much better at home than on the road, A&M does. But still, it'll, it'll give them much more te- more of a test, I think, than Mississippi will. Curiosity games, Saban versus Fisher always is. All right, NFL, let's move ahead to some NFL games. And I'm going to go my rant before we get into the key games and stuff. I am so tired of the Arizona Cardinals and their listless play, but I'm more tired that i got to watch team officials from the Cardinals. First of all, you've seen an NFL Network feature America's uh, America's game in a football life, right? A football life's great. They go about a little introspective an hour on the player. You know, they do one on Brett Favre. They do one on Kurt Warner. Part of one they do one on Larry Fitzgerald, well deserved. Orn Moon, Emmitt Smith, all these are great players. You know, uh, Ray Lewis. You know, you name them. Okay, a lot of greats. Do you think Carson Palmer is qualified for a football life? Carson Palmer. I, he wouldn't be in my top no. pick, no. And here's what's even worse. I'm I'm flipping a dial on the TV last night. They got Carson Palmer's A Football Life Story. I got to watch these team officials tear up about what a courageous performance he had against the Packers in the second round before he got absolutely torched by the Panthers in the NFC Championship game, in which he, I thought he was point shaven. I still think that'll go to my grave, believe in that. Anyways, how would you do a football life on Carson Palmer before you do one on the great Lawrence Taylor, LT? No question, like Lawrence Taylor. Wait. Which will debut next Friday night, uh, DVR your TV. Yeah, I think it's 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock on NFL Network. Yeah, like I said, that, that's an easy pick there. I don't, Carson Palmer would be way down the list. Way down the list. Not, not that. I mean, playoff games did that guy win? I think that was his first one when he beat the Packers, which he can thank Larry Fitzgerald for in overtime after he tried to give the thing away against Aaron Rodgers. Speaking of discount double check as we segue now to more uh, normal topics and, uh, you know, Turn it down a bit. How great was he on Sunday night? He was spectacular, and I loved it because he's on my fantasy team. He was great. Tale of two Come halves. On. First half Bears and Khalil Mack. Thank you, LA or Oakland Raiders. It my is. team. You gave up Mack. Boy, how good is he? In form. How good was he? It, can you? It, it, when you and you know it's from a coaching standpoint. When you've seen teams have a, you get up for somebody you're not supposed to beat. You almost beat them and you lose. Can you be encouraged? Discouraged, a little bit of both. I know Michael Wilbon was upset. It was bad weekend for him, but Northwestern and the Bears losing. Yeah, I, are you encouraged? You're discouraged encouraged the because um, when they when they picked up Mac, I think they obviously said, "Okay, our defense is now going to be, become one of the best." Now they the big rival, uh, divisional rival of Green Bay. They mm-hmm. had him. They had him. And then here comes Mr. Rogers out of the out of the locker room. He's was hurt earlier, and then bam, plays on a messed up leg that might. Hold him out this week, or they, people said he should, but it looks like he's going to play. So I, I think they're upset that they lost. And st- instead of saying, well, we played well enough, almost won, no, they're mad that they lost. And now that's going to help them spur them on. And Because I'm still a little shaky with that offense with uh, the youngster. Yeah, Mr. Trubisky, I'm not convinced he's yeah. the answer. Put Khalil Mack at quarterback. No, are you out of your mind? Mack in the back. Hey, it's a Mack attack. Listen, as we keep on the play on Mack, or the play, uh, play on words on Mack. When you go to Lambeau Field, you know it's Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And that's, that's what it is. He's it is. great. He's great. Well, he's rated what in the, in the summer, pulled by the NFL players, he was number one. So. I, and it's funny because a lot of the talking heads out there, I heard some Dan Patrick this week, his show, there's people are upset that he is considered the best quarterback over Tom Brady who's had the playoff success. But I think if you're picking a team right now, obviously with Brady's age being a factor in that, you're still taking Rodgers because of his mobility. His mobility, as Chris Collins was pointing out, his mobility sets him apart. He can move better in the pocket, and he's got the, the great arm, and he makes plays in the clutch. Well, when you start getting into comparisons, who are you going to take on building the team? Yeah. Are we talking about right now? Yes. Or are we talking about each in their prime, well, which means around the same but, but age? But he's not a prime. That's exactly right. So Brady's not, a little further advanced than Rodgers. I'm not diminishing what Brady's done and how great he is, but... He's so perfect for that system. People get mad with the system thing. He and Belichick have been a great marriage, and he's he fits there. Would Brady, it's almost like Tim Duncan with the Spurs in basketball. Would he fit? He'd be great. I'm not saying he wouldn't be great, but it's a great fit. I think Rodgers fits in more places than Brady does, and that mobility being a reason why. That's so right. They almost said they were Kurt so Warner when he played. Warner wasn't a great fit everywhere. Look what happened in New York. He was a fit when you gave him time to throw. He'd pick you apart. He was so accurate. So Brady with the Packers would not be the Brady he is 
with New England. He'd be very good. He would not be the same. Rodgers with the Patriots would have all those rings. I think I think he would have championships. I don't know if it'd be six or seven. I'd really examine it hard. I think so. He then would. when you talk about listen, that. Drew Bledsoe got him to a Super Bowl, uh, two of them, in fact, and he lost. The, well, he didn't well, start. When, when one, it comes down to you talk like that, then it's not necessarily them too. It's what's the around team, them. Correct. You know. And the, what does Rodgers have that you would say is that people say well, he's got more weapons than Brady? He probably does. But what does he have that you say? Oh yeah, I mean, what running back on that team is is just outstanding? Yeah, yeah. What defensive player? I mean, Clay Matthews when he's been healthy, but that you say is that. Right. So Brady, Brady has had better around him, which is going yes to make him no. look better. Brady's not had better weapons always than Rodgers. He's had he's got Gronk now, but he's had better. De Remember, early in his years, they won because of the defense yes, too. The defense they had really Bruschi good. and Vrabel and Harrison and Law, and obviously Romeo Cornell and Weiss and assistants. I think what's fascinating to me before I get on my next little uh, thought here is, and I tweeted this with the Lions having such a bad debut with Matt Patricia. Oh my gosh, they stink! And I'll get to the Jets here too. Uh, Belichick's assistants have not fared as well as head coaches. Look at Josh McDaniels, look at Charlie Weiss, look at Romeo Cornell, who's a great assistant. As Bill Parcells' assistants, Sean Payton wants to both the Saints, Belichick. Isn't that interesting to you as a coach that yeah, Belichick's you, assistants yeah. have not been as good as Parcells' assistants? Which means to me that, mean? that they're a product of the system. So when they came out of the system and went elsewhere, now you're going to say, well, wouldn't they take that same system and apply it elsewhere? You can do that, okay. but that doesn't guarantee you success elsewhere. Okay. That that they're they're better suited. And in the case of Josh McDaniels, even the, the, the pros, the guys way over our heads say, he's probably a much better coordinator you than get, he is as a head coach. You can pay like a head coach now, too. Right. And, and, yeah. and there's something about that because there's a lot of times in coaching yeah. that we, we pay guys. So, you know, he's a very good head coach or he's a great assistant. And then he got, becomes the great assistant, becomes a head coach, and we say eh, something that's not right. He, he's more suited to be an assistant. Well, we like to think every coach has should have the opportunity to move up in their particular sport, and and can they be as good as they were? But a lot of that depends. And we always say, as a, I'm a coach, your personnel, your players. Yeah. We got stuff up here, but it's getting this up here into your players, and then making it work. You need the luck, and football it's about injuries and what other teams are hot. So, so much goes here. But that is a very interesting point that a lot of uh, Belichick's people are not real successful head coaches elsewhere. Yeah. Parcells guys have been. Romeo and Char Charlie were great at, at what they did as assistants most so much. And it's, sometimes it's personalities, too. And um, I mean, sure. I look at the Lions. Sure. Patricia's worked these guys up, and it's starting to leak out. These players don't like them. They could be headed for like a 3-13 and year, though Matthew Stafford's going to bounce back and play better. Jim Caldwell is more laid back from the Tony Dungy school, more laid back players type of coach. Does that, in your eyes, not diminish or, you know, less make you think less of Belichick? Does that does that elevate in your eyes Parcells that he's had guys more than Bel Belichick? You don't Both look coaches at that way. to me are great, okay. great coaches in their sport, and, and really transcend any sport. The two Bills, it's a great thirty yeah. for thirty, by the way. Yeah, they they're they're very good in what they do, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and to. Piggyback on something you're saying, when you, when you are known as a hard-nosed coach on the pro level, you have to have the right type of guys that you can push really hard because that raw, raw college stuff doesn't necessarily work in the pros because the pros go through a lot more. It's a little bit longer season. True, true. You almost have to get rid of that and bring in the type of player you can push. Yeah. But you got to hope they're talented because you got to have talent at any level to win. But it is funny how a lot of times in pros, and I'm talking any sport, look at baseball. Baseball starting to hire bait analytical managers, not not the old hard school, you know, come out there and turn your hat on back backwards, the old Weaver type and spark Anderson screaming at umpires or whatever. It's, it's not that type. And a lot of times in college, in NBA, you get a college basketball coach comes up, he's a raw, raw type screaming, players tune him off. Mm -hmm. He ends up getting fired. Jerry Tarkanian sure. wasn't very successful. Sure. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski has not taken that jump to the, Pro level, and part of what Shashevsky has said in interviews is he wonders himself if what he does and how he does is successful. Yeah. He's not known as a yeller. We didn't see Dean Smith, and you look obviously at guys like Izzo and Patino, who had a brief stint, Calipari, who had a brief stint, and obviously Calipari being a master recruiter. So we shift gears into, and we won't go through every game because we're running short on time. We'll go through yes. a game or two we like. Uh, we mentioned earlier Carson Palmer, who played with the Cardinals and the Bengals. He went to, and the Bengals are 2 0 roaring right now, so it'd be the Ravens surprising to us on Thursday night. But Carson Palmer played his college football at USC. So did Sam Darnold, now with the Jets. By the way, maybe Palmer should go uh, go be the backup with the Jets come out of retirement. Then you could have a Darnold Palmer combination. Get it? Darnold Palmer? 
man, I tell you what. Then when they're off scene, they go play golf a lot together. Oh, ding, ding. How about Sam Darnold, though? Great debut. He's doing well. Is he the uh, real the deal? quarterback. Um, I'm, when he came out, when the, all those guys came out this year, and they said it's going to probably be down the road one of the best quarterback drafts yeah. eventually since, what, Roethlisberger and those guys, mm -hmm. or I don't know if it was Dan Marino's class, but I, I like the kid Josh Allen. You uh, do. He's in a tougher place. And that's an interesting game to me. You say why, because the Bills got absolutely tattooed, and they got tattooed 47-3 by the Ravens. The Chargers coming off that 38-28 loss to the Chiefs. This is sort of a must-win going to Buffalo, but that point spread could be too high. Is, is everybody overreacting to the Bills being that bad? Could they pull a su surprise and beat the Chargers here and put L.A. in a 0-2 hole? I, I think Wonder. Charger. My gut feeling is Chargers coming in. I think they're going to lay it on them. I no Bosa. The Bills. I think it might be close. I'm starting to wonder about that one. I, I'm, I'm hoping the Allen guy, he does well. I picked the Chargers. The Allen guy. I, I hope the Chargers lose because they're in a division with the Raiders. Even though I'm mad at the Raiders, I still got to see them win. You know, you could have two defensive rookie of the year candidates in this game. Derwin James for the Chargers, who if you watched some of that on Red Zone last week, he looked superb. And then Tremaine Edmonds out of Dan River High School, Virginia Tech for the Bills at linebacker. He's going to be a, a great pro. I've been saying that since he was in uh, high school. Uh, give me a game, but okay, well that's not one of the games we'll look at for that, that's must watch. Give me a game you're most looking forward to here, or, or two. Panthers at Falcons, Vikings at Packers, will Rodgers play, what's the status there? Browns at Saints, will there be another tie? Dolphins at Jets, does Darnold make it 2-0? Chiefs at Steelers, could Pittsburgh be an 0-1-1? That game bothers me. Game Eagles at Bucks. I don't know if Ryan Fitzpatrick can make Fitz magic no. two weeks in a row. Fitz magic won't work in this game. Texans at Titans. Somebody's going to be in panic mode. Zero and two. Colts at Redskins. Mr. Luck goes to DC. Cardinals at Rams. We know what's going to happen. That's I'm already. Destroyed. I'm already trying to jinx the Rams. I'm wearing a Marshall Falk jersey. That's, Hopefully that's a reverse reverse psychology. Get the uh, Rams to lose that game. Lions at Niners. Raiders at Broncos. I'm curious to see what happens in that game. And then the Pats at the Jaguars. Before you get to Sunday night with the. Giants at Cowboys and Seahawks at Bears. You really kind of paused when I hit that Steelers game with the Chiefs. A lot of big playmakers for yeah. Pat Mahomes and that big arm. You got Tyreek Hill, you got Kareem Hunt, the running back, had 110 yards of scrimmage in the last time they played. You got uh, Travis Kelsey at tight end. Is that Pittsburgh defense? Everybody talking about Le'Veon Bell. When's he coming back? They're going to get rid of him. James Conner had a nice debut. Is that Pittsburgh defense equipped to slow down Andy Reid's offense, which has been dink and dunk with Alex Smith? Now you got a big arm in Mahomes. Can the Chiefs conquer the Steelers, who lead the all-time series twenty-two to ten? Secondary for the Steelers is going to get tested. Yeah. I'm worried Roethlisberger is not hundred percent. He gets hurt. Boy, he stunk last week. He gets week. hurt. That defense is not going to be strong enough to carry him over Kansas City. I don't think Kansas City has some nice playmakers, and Mahomes is starting to show that you know he can throw it long. But then again. You know, like somebody once told me, when you throw the ball, uh, three, only three things happen, two of them are bad. So, I, even though I like a lot of passing, I'm going with Steelers, but it's going to be a, a very tight game, and I hope Roethlisberger can get all the way through. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this one. I could see Kansas City making it 2-0 and uh, in that game. I'm not I'm not totally convinced in that one. By the way, uh, 76 yards is all Big Ben needs to pass. John Elway for seventh get it. in the annals. He might get it by the end of the first half. I would say by the end of the first half, I think he'll get it. Vikings at Packers is the game I like. I want to see uh, Kirk Cousins against Aaron Rodgers at the showdown. Everybody's going to be looking at those two quarterbacks. Dalvin Cook, to me, is the key for the Vikings. And that Vikings defense, a lot of good players, from Xavier Rhodes to Everson Griffin to Harrison Smith. I think Rodgers or no Rodgers, the Vikings can go into Mr. Rodgers' neighborhood and put up a good fight, possibly win. Yeah, I know you're going to like it, but it's the way I do it. <laughs> Packers win if Rodgers plays. He don't play. I'm going Vikings. They're that good. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Vikings win no Rodgers or with Rodgers. With Rodgers, it'll be very close and dicey. Without Rodgers, I don't think it's that close. So that's what I'm going to say on that one. And then the Panthers at the Falcons. Can the Falcons actually start 0-2? The red zone was so bad at offense. The I think before. I got them starting 0-2. You I got Carolina. I, I think I do. Have, I didn't. Taking I went against Carolina at home against Dallas. Um I think this game I can't go against Carolina. Well, you had 24-20 Atlanta, so you changing your pick here live on video? Oh, I did have Atlanta at uh, home. You hmm. changed. So that means two weeks in a row I'm going against Carolina. Yeah, Cam Newton's going to throw eggs at you. Hmm. By the way, you know who the backup quarterback to Cam Newton is? 
Taylor Heineke. Heineke from Old Dominion. Yeah. Who, who will not see the field this year. Uh, unless Cam, Cam Newton gets hurt. Right. Okay. Cam, it. you better take as many precautions as you can because this guy's predicting no snow and we get two feet of it and he's saying you're not getting hurt. He's so. not getting hurt. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with my Falcon pick. I don't want to change it. Ooh, I'll be worried about it. that. I think the Giants are going to beat Dallas. Dallas is going to be 0 2 and the world's crashing down. I got down. I think your Raiders are going to be 0 2 when the world's crashing I down got Denver. in Denver. I think the Broncos are going to take care of business. and John Green's going to explode here soon. You know what he tends to do is he throws his quarterbacks under the bus. Yeah, so he got on Derek Carr. Yeah, um, he's and he got rid of EJ Manuel. And yeah, I, I'm a little worried about that. A little worried about It's only the second game, but I'm telling you, I'm still mad about the Cleo Mack trade. How do we not talk about the AFC Championship rematch? we got to do it before we go here. Pat's. At Jaguars, uh, Leonard Fournette's dinged up. Uh, I don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, Gronk, everybody's talking about Here that big go. battle. Who's going to win it? Does Jacksonville protect the home turf? See, to me, this is a game where New England's almost in a win-win. If they win, they shut Jacksonville up. If they lose, that's okay. Belichick just sticks us in their crawl for seven, eight weeks. Everybody writes the Patriots off and, and declares their demise. And they come to the playoffs, and then they go further than the Jaguars. The Super Bowl. Right. So I don't see how this is a loss at all for New England, which leads... The all-time series, seven to nil. Jacksonville's never beaten them, and they won't this Sunday either. I think they will, but it won't matter in the grand scheme of things. It's just one game, week two. Nobody will remember it. Actually, the Pats will because it'll fire them up and get them going. Um, because they were not all that impressive, despite beating Houston twenty-seven to twenty. I actually thought the Jaguars were a little more impressive in their twenty to fifteen win over the Giants. Though they weren't that great either. And I'm still not totally convinced Jacksonville's a Super Bowl. I know a lot of people are. I just don't trust Blake Bortles. Well, I, I went against him against the Giants, which was stupid. Well, it was stupid as a one-possession game, and the Giants well, just couldn't get that one score. In terms of going into this game, where were the Giants last year? Where was Jacksonville? I understand that. 3-13, and 13, but it's a new year. New new coach with Pat Shermer. you got Saquon Barkley, running back, who had 106 yards. Played well in his debut. And I think they'll beat the Cowboys, who have 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 a myriad of offensive issues, including on the O line, and then with no big time receivers to make plays. Where is Des Bryant? Get Des Bryant back, Cowboys. You need a receiver. Jason Witten is staying in the booth, so you need Des Bryant's out there. Swallow your pride and bring him back. Jason Witten could leave the booth and let Booger McFarlane get up in the studio. Witten's, Witten's happy Booger where he's work at. with Tess. He's happy. He needs to talk a little bit more, though. He needs to be more demonstrative. I think. Okay. Uh, up there, but um, uh, Dallas in trouble. Your big winner from the Sunday football, I'm going to tell you right here now. I think your big winner. Uh, who's your lock? Who's your lock? I you don't have lock? A, a lock. Who, who's going to definitely win? The Saints are going to definitely beat the Browns. They're not starting 0 2 losing yeah, at home. Yeah, the Saints are going to win. But your big winner, if they get the win, which is an if, I think if KC beats Pittsburgh at 2 0, we start to talk about Kansas City again as a real serious threat. I think they could be the big winner. So that'll do it for Sports Talk Plus. He's the coach, Ed Young. Me. I'm the other guy, Matt Hath. You'll listen every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon on ESPN Radio 94.1. If right. you want to get involved with the Sports Talk Plus video show, comment. We're looking for sponsors. You better do so now before somebody jumps on it. Take the bite while you can. Enjoy your football weekend, and we'll talk to you next time.